enthusiasts on the pod are like, I know oh, they're gonna be, they're, they're, gonna, they're, be gonna, going, they're yeah. gonna be like, like, but you got fixed wings, you got rotors, you got tricopters, that, they're you gonna got be going, that fella knows nothing. <laughs> um, yeah, there are lots of different types of drone too, but at the end of the day, a drone is a means to get a payload in the air. Okay, so you think that the camera is more fundamental than the drone? Well, um, it's, yeah, but without the drone, you're not going to get the camera in the air unless you stick it and put it on a stick. True. Okay. Hello. Hello. Oh, we said it at the same time. And we did. Yeah. Ooh. Just say oh, jinx uh, in the playground. When you I like I like, like your new I like your new jacket, uh, Alex. Um, I think it's on the, other, can, it's the on the other side. Around, isn't it? Because I'm back to front. No, no, it's the it other says. way. No, it's the other way. We're here. No, the other way. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I'm mirrored. In this you are thing, mirrored. So it there says hammer missions. I don't know if it's the right way round in this. It is. It is, is it the right, the right way. Yeah, yeah. Now you're pointing to the right thing. Yes, yes. We can there, see. I just point with both yeah. hands. Yeah, there we there go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I've got my uh, my my um, infamous hammer missions jacket on. Yeah. Um, which blends quite nicely into the background. You I are think blending. I can. I can probably disappear. No, it's. You are blending into the background. I, I've got to get mine on as well, so then we can both kind of yeah. blend into the background. And when we're all together, we look like a boy band. Boy band. <laughs> well, either that or a um a set of a gardening team. A gardening team. <laughs> park or, rangers. Or, or park rangers. I prefer park the rangers. phrase park rangers. It makes us <laughs> sound more cool. Yeah. Than a, um, than a team of gardeners. Well, if you're flying in the park, who's got the ultimate say whether you can fly or not? It's the me. <laughs> me me because you're the ranger yeah, because i am the ranger yeah, yeah. and the, uh, range, the ranger always has the final say and officially i think on my um on my kind of exam thing that i did many many years ago for you know my it's not a license it's my permissions mm -hmm. um i'm actually quoted as a commander a commander Commander, wow. yeah, I'll have to dig that. I'll have to dig that out and show you. I've not it's come across my, that term in a long time. It's on my certificate time. that says Commander. And which, how many badges um, do you have uh, for the? I don't uh, know. <laughs> I'd like a few. I don't know how many a Commander has, but I think the, the title Commander sounds sounds pretty cool. Sounds pretty cool. I like yes. that. Not that I've ever called myself a Commander. <laughs> um, I think people would probably laugh in my face. Command and control. Hmm. Commander of the air. Commander of the air. Commander yeah. of the craft. Commander craft of the craft. Craft commander. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah. So you go, yeah. So that's, that's the only time I'm ever saying I'm a, I, I had the title of commander, which of course is now for, forever on the internet. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Documented forever. <laughs> Documented forever on the old Tinter web. Yeah. So there you go. So this week's subject, what have we got, Varen? Go we've for got, it. we've got, drum roll. Hopefully we can add that later on. We'll add that. Drum, drone cameras explained. So you almost want the explained, like explained. Okay, there we like go. Some kind of Hollywood, Hollywood thing. You're better at these things. Uh, I'm more like just read the I, text. <laughs> I try. I do try. Um, so uh, I guess we you know we start with um, why do drone cameras matter? Right. It's very obvious. In, it is in, obvious. Yeah. It's very obvious. Yeah, but you know, the problem with the drone is that because there's so much hardware involved and flying hardware, that there's a lot of attention that goes on the flying. And whilst the flying bit is really important, um, ultimately, you have to kind of remember that a drone is nothing but, um, especially for mapping and inspection and even cinematography, a drone is nothing but a camera flying. It's a, it's a tool, isn't it? It's, it's a tool, it, yeah. You know, it's a tool, like a, you know, a screwdriver is or a, you know, a, a hammer. <laughs> um you know it, it is a, it is a tool at yes. the end of the day it's it's not going to produce you know just by having a drone and flying it doesn't mean you're going to produce class work yeah you know um yeah. you need to know what you're doing with that tool and how good that tool is yeah and that tool at the end of the day it's a tool to capture data and to produce data um yep. and so it's all about the data so I mean, what could be more instrumental than a camera when it comes to image data? Yeah, yeah. it's just a sensor flying in three D space. Ooh, that's uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think actually I think you wrote that because so did I? Oh, did I? Yeah. Uh, did I? No, it sounds really cool. A sensor <laughs> flying in three D space. I'm yeah, sure just... there's. 
maybe a squeeze a book title out of that somewhere. Yeah. Um, Gotta visualize you, that. Yeah, I mean, you're right. It's not about the drone. It's about the data that that drone collects. And the way that drone collects that data is via its sensor or its camera. Yeah. And the sensor slash camera has a high degree of influence on the quality of the final output or the final mm. deliverable. Um, of and therefore, it matters to know more about cameras and and how they influence what you're trying to achieve, essentially. Mm. Um, yeah, but you're not going to uh, go up there with a two megapixel camera and expect amazing results, you know. Yeah. To, especially for something like photogrammetry, I mean, even you know, inspection, any of it, you know, you're going to want something that's, you know, camera technology and dr on drones has advanced so much over the last, I don't know, f five years. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got we've got kit up there now with, you know, you've got obviously you've got the big rigs that are capable of carrying cinema cameras. But your consumer drones, you know, you, you, well, the brand spanking new one is the DJI uh, Mavic 3 Classic. Mm -hmm. That's got 5.2K, uh, 5 can shoot in 5.2K, uh, and a 20 megapixel camera with a micro four thirds lens. Yeah. You know, unheard of years yeah. back without having a separate camera actually yeah. on your on your rig. Yeah. So awesome. things, things are moving up. Yeah, that's a really good point, right? Because I think initially you have yeah, things are moving up. Very, very <laughs> well done, well done. So, um, so I think um, you're right that you know five, seven years ago you used to think about the drone as one system and the camera as a separate mm. system, and I think now you think about them as an integrated, all-in-one system. And yeah. In fact, because the drones have become so standardized, it's sort of a given. I mean, especially with the DJI line of things. I mean, you kind of know that the drone will do what it's supposed to do. So it all really boils down to the camera, right? I mean, that's what's yep. changing now. I mean, you know, the fundamentally um, on the drone side, maybe the battery is getting better, but it's not. I mean, on, yeah, obviously on the drone, you're going to have, you know, vision sensors, um, obstacle avoidance, your battery. But what it boils down to is you're right. It's the camera. Yeah. It's what that camera can produce, whether it be for photography, 3D modeling, inspection, um filming it's all about that camera yeah so let's double click in onto that and try to understand what impact can a camera have um so what is the sort of what are the different ways in which a camera affects your you know use case job inspection what mapping whatever you want to call it i'm obviously you know the higher the megapixel camera the better the quality is going to be which includes the sensor size mm -hmm. um you know, if you're going to shoot with it, as we have done, you're going to shoot with a 20 megapixel camera on, let's say, a Mavic 2 Pro. Mm -hmm. You compare that with, let's say, the DJI P1 or a mm -hmm. Phase 1 camera, mm -hmm. where the sensor size is bigger, the megapixels are bigger, the quality is obviously going to be better. Mm -hmm. And you will be able to shoot from a further distance. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, you've obviously got uh, ground sampling distance as well sorry something stuck on my table um you know the better the resolution of the camera you know the the better the gsd so to speak yeah i mean so um yeah the d Ooh. definitely i think the did you hear that no that was th i'm surprised you didn't hear that it was thunder big oh thunder. really oh wow yeah well, that's scary yeah well, Sorry about that. Sorry to, to interject. My whole, no, the no whole, problem the at whole all. office just shook. I was like, uh, what's that? So, there could, we go. Can't hear it. Can't hear it. It's coming your way. The mics are doing their job. <laughs> yeah, they are. They um, are indeed. So, yeah. So, I guess you, you were talking about resolution. Um, and yes, the megapixel counts has a big impact um, on the GSD as well, because obviously, um, assuming the same altitude or the same distance to the target, the higher your megapixel in the camera, the better yeah. your GSD will be, the lower the GSD will be. Um, and this is one of the things that is sometimes counterintuitive because higher the resolution, lower the GSD because you're covering sometimes more ground um, That's right. per, per megapixel. Um, so I think that um, understanding that is quite key. Um, so yeah, I think GSD is one of the things that's influenced by the camera resolution as you mentioned the exposure settings of the camera also influence the quality of the end results oh, um, indeed just so many properties that in the end add up and have a net effect on your output um 
that if you don't manage these properties, like what is the sensor size? What is the resolution? What is the exposure setting? Uh, you're going to end up with a bad result if you don't know yeah. what's going on because all of these factors are, are at play all together in the field. Um, so, and that's why drone cameras matter a lot because they have so many different properties you've got to optimize to get a great, great results. Um, yeah. In some sense, if you come from a photography or filming background um, and move into the sort of mapping inspection side of things you can greatly benefit from your photogram well, you, from you've your already got a, you've already got a toe in haven't you yeah you know if you if you know how to collect correctly set shutter speed exposure you know your white balance already you've got you know you've got the, the step up yeah um you know a lot of the cameras you know we say don't don't use auto mm -hmm. um which we've said quite a lot mm -hmm. um but a lot of the cameras now the, the drone cameras are very easy to maintain and to mm. get the correct, you know, mm. the correct picture that you, that you want out of them. Yeah. Uh, gone are the days of having to set up your, you know, set up your external camera before you fly because it's all there now for you to to use. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, it's becoming easier and easier. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's so easy that you don't even know what's going on. Um, yep. which can be a challenge <laughs> Yes, because when things go wrong, you don't know why they went wrong. Well, we've yeah. had, you know, uh, and it was, as we discovered, it was down to a DJI bug issue, um, which I've experienced on on other kit, but our, our bless our Phantom 4 Pro was was taking night-night shots in the middle of the day. Yeah, exactly. Um, but a quick camera reset and that, you know, that, that fixed that pretty quick. But I've had it with the Mavic Two. It's just it is one of those, yeah. one of those things that yeah, you know, if you don't know about it, you'll bash your head against a wall trying to fix it. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, and uh, also the the market is now the, the competitive landscape for cameras is changing quite quite significantly, right? So I think one of the drivers for this is, for instance, the sensor size, because you've obviously mentioned the Phantom Four. Um, yep. Phantom Four used to be. I mean, if you go back like five, six years ago, that used to be sort of like the flagship um, DJI ca camera for mapping. And, one inch set, one inch, one, yeah. one inch mechanical shutter. Yeah, that's it, the one inch. Um, so that's the one inch sensor size. And so to explain to people what that means is that obviously every camera has got, um, you know, a sensor on which the image is being formed. Yeah. Um, and typically the sensor size, um, depending on how it's been described, it refers to the diagonal. Um, of the sensor um, so the one inch is the length of the diagonal of that sort of sensor that's uh, that's taking the image um, although people sometimes also mention sensor width or the sensor height uh, which means that again if you imagine a rectangle on which the image is being formed you've got the length of the breadth of that sensor um, but um, why does the sensor size matter um, so um, you know why has it become so competitive on having a high full frame sensor. So I mean, the higher the sensor size, the more information is collected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, the more information can be captured and reconstructed. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, when when the data comes around to being processed. Yeah. It's um yeah, it's just light, right? Simple, it's a light more, yeah. more light on more light information being being reconstructed by the camera because yeah. that's what a camera does, right? <laughs> to yeah. Converts light into an image. <laughs> and the higher the sensor size, the higher the resolution, mm -hmm. more pixels means more resolution. Yeah. High megapixel, high resolution. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that yeah. Works. yeah, exactly. And it's, you know, it's, it's sort of like it's able to uh, get to, the sensor is able to sense. Um, the reality in a better way. So you yep. know, figure out the profiles of things better, uh, the sort of lighting conditions better. Um, and more information is typically really good for photogrammetry um, if you're trying to create a map or a 3D model. Uh, it's also really good for um, inspection, right? Because if you have, I mean, I think the, you can, the high megapixel count um, is useful for inspection, right? I mean, you can kind of like Yeah, zoom. I mean... Yeah, and even with the you know with the the Mavic 2's twenty megapixel camera, yeah, you know it's twenty megapixel camera Hasselblad on a one inch sensor. Yeah, you know you you can zoom right in and see some really good detail. Yeah, uh, you go up to something like the P1, it's gone apocalyptic outside my outside my window there. <laughs> 
the apocalypse has come. Um, you, you know, you shift up to something like the P1, which I think it's got, was it a 48 or 45 megapixel camera? I think it's, I a, 40, I think it's, a, I think it's a 45, yeah. So, mm. you know, you've got twice the, or over twice the amount of megapixels. Yeah. You know, you can zoom right in, the detail is going to be even more defined. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And then you've got I think. something like a phase one, a hundred megapixel camera, and yeah, or the share UAV, which is also um, or share UAV, of maybe, course. Yeah, which is also uh, they've also released a hundred megapixel camera. Uh, we're going to talk about the- we're going to talk about the the pros and cons of like large camera sizes because I think there is there's so many things to consider. Um, I think we should link up our, our case study over here, which we did on yeah. the large camera sizes. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Um, um, I know in the last last podcast we actually linked the um, we talked about GCPs and we had the GCPs um, actually thrown into the video, which is great. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, let's go back and review that. Yeah. Do you remember you I did rec- that? No. Well, I add them in. Yeah. Did I add them in. I did add them in. You did, right? I think or, I did. Or was it me? I'll no, go I'm back. Sure. I'll go. I'll go back and check. Or was it? Yeah. Maybe Shku. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, it was one of us. One of, one of us, of the team, definitely one, one of, of us. The, team, definitely the usual, one of the team the usual suspects. In. The usual suspects. Um, so Indeed. okay, um, so that's a lot about sensor size. So you know that matters. Yep. It talks about it. What about the focal length and the field of view of the camera? Because obviously, those are um, quite important uh, as well when you when you're capturing any any image really with a camera. Um, yeah, I mean fixed focal length, especially for something like photogrammetry. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to you want a fixed focal length. You don't want that focal length to change. Mm-hmm. Uh, change the focal length. You're gonna vastly disrupt the image or the end the end result. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, for inspection, um, mm-hmm. you know you kind of probably maybe even better off with a with a zoom style lens. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so if you're if you're fl- you know flying away up there and you know you might not be a surveyor, but you may know kind of what you're looking for. Um, and you see something you know, like maybe a, they've asked you to look for something around a chimney and you spot a couple of cracked tiles off to the left. Mm-hmm. You can zoom in on those cracked tiles and get a closer, more defined shot. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's amazing because, you know, like that's the thing with focal length. If you understand what focal length is and then the fact that you can exploit it to do a better inspection, as you mentioned, with the zoom, um, you know, you can get a really high quality data, data set for your inspection. Yep. And I think with the focal length, that's the kind of the important thing to understand is that it's a trade off between focal length and and the field of view. So yep. typically the bigger your focal length, the narrower your field of view is going to be. Um, so it's going to be higher focal length means you can see um, a really small section of the scene, but you can see it in its detail. Yeah. Um, in all its glory. And you can count glory. the hairs on a bit of moss. <laughs> <laughs> not that that's an interesting that. <laughs> no, not that that's and a real you know application what? i don't even know where that little thought just came from but yeah, <laughs> yeah um, bizarre i do yeah, think it's some bizarre. strange stuff well we've um, all got interesting thoughts firing in yeah. indeed we have indeed i um, mean you, you know a lot of the a lot of the enterprise rigs mm-hmm. um will come well they, they don't come with but they have the ability to take cameras with interchangeable lenses yeah so obviously some of the smaller kit uh, doesn't, but they have started to introduce, um, I mean, even on things like not the Mavic 3 Classic that just has a standard uh, micro four thirds lens. I think on the Mavic 3 mm-hmm. and I think the Mavic 3 Enterprise as well, from what I remember, has the zoom capability. It has a zoom capability, but I think you were talking about the interchangeable lenses, right? Or yeah. Do you mean, or do you mean um, kind of being able to zoom? Because that. Yeah, I mean, but the the the, the, the smaller the smaller rigs that mm-hmm. probably are more you know are more affordable mm-hmm. have started being introduced with a zoom capability as well right. as fixed focus. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the bigger rigs like the M three hundred can carry stuff like the P one, yeah. um, which does have an interchangeable lens. Yeah. So. so- yeah, yeah. There's lots of sort of advantages. Yeah. Do you want to unwrap what that means? Um, the interchangeable lens for, for people who don't know. Uh, okay. Interchangeable lens, aka like a, a digital SLR or mm-hmm. uh, you know your your you know your your standard mirrored camera. You yeah. can actually take the lens off. Oh, 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 oh sorry. Doing, sorry. That's just right. uh, closing the window. So you can either take the let you can take the lens off and change that lens for another one. 
Mm-hmm. So, for example, on the let's go Inspire 2, for example, mm-hmm. um, comes with a 15 millimeter micro four thirds prime lens. Mm-hmm. You can take that lens off. Mm-hmm. You can put a 25 mil on there, a 45 yeah. on there. You can put a zoom lens on there if you want to. Mm-hmm. And there are only a, a selection of lenses you can use. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, interchangeable means in layman's terms, you take the lens off and put another put one, a different on. one in. Yeah. Yeah. So- like a mirrorless camera. Yeah, that's it. And so from a capability standpoint, what that means is that depending on what you're trying to do, if you're trying to capture something at a distance and you want to have a longer focal length and a and a narrower field of view, you basically get a you know an interchangeable lens that is uh, higher, uh, <laughs> higher focal length, and then you're able yep. to capture uh, something at a distance um, and you capture less of the scene, but you capture something in detail. Whereas the other way around, obviously, it's just the opposite. So you capture more of the scene but um less detail so it kind of yeah goes both ways and and it that's kind of the as you said it's a trade-off and yeah. that's the kind of benefit for some of the larger kit right the larger drones uh that you can have cameras with interchangeable lenses uh, whereas with the smaller uh drones you're basically just just stuck with what you have and now if you've got an application which requires you know something custom um yep you kind of have to now think about using a different drone or something like that. So I think, yeah, um, you know, the bigger drones, harder to carry, less portable, but more customizable and focal length. And sometimes is one of the... scary to fly. <laughs> sometimes scary. Experience. Scary to watch. <laughs> scary to fly, scary to watch, and they're very loud. Yeah. yeah. Um, and but... expensive. Yeah. Don't crash them. But they can be, for... they can afford to be with a larger focal length further away from the target. They can. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep, they can so, indeed. Um so. yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to trying to defend my large drones. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, don't be wrong. I like I like I like big drones. Yeah. Um but yeah, when you're on the uh when you're on the controlling end of one and it's honking around the sky like a bus. Yeah. Um you think, well, if that thing falls out, um it's gonna it's gonna cause some damage. Yeah. That brings me to an interesting point, which is, you know, mm-hmm. things are getting um what's the word mini minified or oh, there's another smaller. word for it smaller um over time minified, smaller, yeah. <laughs> minified. There, <laughs> I, like there is, I think there's a technical word miniaturized uh, i can't miniaturized that's it yeah that's the word i was looking for um and things you know things do get smaller and smaller over time right like i mean imagine your computer your phone your tab like well, you know, weirdly uh, enough you should say about phones mm-hmm. Back in the 90s, phones got smaller and smaller and smaller. And, you know, yeah. you'd have a fold-up phone that was kind of that big that you folded out. And yeah. now phones are getting bigger and bigger and bigger again. Oh, that's true. Because the screen size is right. Yeah, mm. it's true. Yeah. It's the contraction and expansion at the same time. Well, it's the, the time, introduction yeah. of the smartphone, isn't it? You couldn't yep. have a smartphone on something that big because you just... Uh-huh. It needs a big brain, it. right? So Yeah. <laughs> needs some poke behind it. <laughs> There's a poke behind it. It's also some compute. <laughs> um, but with the cameras, I think we're kind of... We, it's interesting because we are getting to, um, you know, cameras are also getting smaller and smaller. As we know, like yep. our phone cameras can get um, pretty high pixel and pretty high yeah. resolution. A lot of it is digital, but, you know, we've got that on the phones. And I think the economies of scale will translate to um, drone cameras as well. Yeah. And I'm, I'm quite confident that um, in general, drone cameras, depending on the drone, can be quite small. But I think over time, they're just going to get even smaller um, just because that's what all the other industries it, pushing it is it is the way it's going um yeah. yeah i mean you know look at the mavic 3 uh mavic 3 mini mm-hmm. the camera on that is tiny yeah yeah i've the quality it produces is actually yeah. pretty bloody good yeah. for such for something so small yeah um you know saying that even the you know when I mean, you think about they've they've now created a micro four thirds camera and put it on a drone which they did do originally with the obviously with the Inspire One and the Inspire Two, but mm. now they've created a you know a little Diddy Micro Four Thirds that goes on the on a Mavic Three. Yeah, you know it's, it's amazing. It's, yeah, it's hard it's, to fathom. Yeah, but you know all the One. better for us. All the better for us to to get you know get the captures in and and collect our data because it's that the you know the the end product's going to be even better. Yeah. Absolutely. If not, if not more a little pricey. Yeah. The cost versus value is always going to be a question. Um, things also get cheaper over time. I mean, if you think about yep. what cameras used to cost 
long time ago was what they cost now. I think the specialization of the fact that they can be bolted on on a drone and the fact they can be, you know, the aerial cameras. I think a lot of those things drive the cost up. But then I'm sure over time, as with technology, you know, the price is going to come down. So, uh, yeah. Um, but talking about cameras, I think uh, image resolution is a big part of cameras. Um, so I think we've talked a little bit about megapixels. By megapixels, obviously, we mean the image resolution. Yep. Um, we've already mentioned that um, high megapixels means that for inspections, you can zoom in and not lose the details. I think you know things don't get blurry, basically, when you zoom in. Um, um, but there are also downsides of, of higher yeah. resolution, right? The more um, the more megapixels, the bigger the image, hmm. as we have discovered in the past. <laughs> um, you know, if you're shooting something with a 50 megapixel camera, hmm. the image is going to be pretty big. Yeah, because it's got to collate all that data into a file, right? Yeah, yeah. But that file is not going to be an average size file. It's obviously hmm. got to put all that data somewhere. Yeah, and it's going to put it in that file, and that file is going to be fairly hefty. Yeah. Yeah. We're seeing like 80, 100 megabyte files, you know? Yep. I mean, one file is 100 megabytes. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, um, crazy in a good and bad way. I mean, yes, it's yep. got all that punch and all that data, but that's sometimes that you, used to be the, yeah. You've got to be able to store that data, but no. not only store it, you've got to be able to process that data. Yeah. So if you're putting that, you know, one you know one file is 100 megabytes how many are you going to use for a i don't know 3d mapping a building yeah let's say four f- 400 yeah 500 you sometimes know. yeah you've got to put all of that yeah at 100 megabytes each yeah through a bit of processing software yeah if it's desk if it's desktop yeah. you've got to have a machine beefy enough to be able to to produce your end result yeah or if it's cloud-based you know, again, you got to have the internet connection to be able to hack it. Yeah, well, not hack it, but handle it. If you know, what yeah. I mean. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you're not going to hack it. You can have to handle it. Um, and then obviously, whatever is at the other end in the cloud, producing or processing that bit of work, you know, that's also got to have enough gusto to be able to to produce it and not yeah. crash. Yeah. So you've got like, you know, I mean, if you think about that 500 image example. Um, or a building, maybe a thousand images, you know, you've got like 50 gigabytes, 100 gigabyte data sets um, that are basically for one project. And that's yep. a lot of data to move around for one project. So I think the key here is to that, you know, more is not always more and sometimes less is more. And so yep. you've got to really identify, do you need that level of detail for your specific projects? Um, and it should definitely not be the distinguishing factor between how you deliver data versus how somebody else delivers the data. I think it's really important to also think about the time cost, as you mentioned, of the upload speeds and kind of all the other steps along the way that a large megapixel data set can sometimes impact. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, um, megapixels is a very controversial. You need just it enough is. to be able to see everything, but not too much to be not able to... Not too much to be able to destroy what you're trying to build yeah. before you've built it yeah. before you've built yeah. it yeah. Yeah. Rome um, wasn't built in a day as they say no. not that it has any context yeah. to what we're talking about but <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah, I mean yeah I know what you mean <laughs> um, um, right and then the other property for cameras that is quite important especially for the drone world is the shutter speed yep um, so um Shutter speed, as the name implies, is um, how quickly does the shutter, because every camera has a shutter to mm-hmm. take images. So how quickly does that open and close to take an image? So that is different for different cameras, um, but it has an extremely important, um, it's got an extremely important reason uh, to exist or to be relevant to the drone side of things. Um which has got to do with the um, mapping speed. Yes. So. Yeah. I mean, as as we have, you know, discovered if if the aircraft's running too quickly, so the drone's running too quick, mm-hmm. you're going to get motion blur. Yeah. Or no so photos at all. If, if... Or, no, or, or no photos at all if it's going rapido and the shutter speed isn't set correctly. Yeah. So it's finding that fine line between speed 
and shutter speed. Yeah, drone speed versus shutter speed. Drone speed versus shutter speed. Yeah. I mean, if you've got two images 10 meters apart and the shutter speed is, you know, a photo every two seconds, then your drone cannot fly more than five meters per second because you divide 10 by two, you get five. So if it's flying faster than five before it's taken the image, it's already going to be past those points. So, um, and that's why, like, you know, you need to have your mapping application understand this and then compute the right drone speed based on the camera speed. Um, yeah. I think, so, I mean, we did this in Hammer Missions a long time ago. Uh, I think when the first version launched, um, it was important that people didn't miss photos because the moment you miss, miss photos, I mean, that's all all is lost when you miss photos. Exactly. I mean, I mean, the good thing in Hammer is we do have an optimal speed setting. Yeah. So if you, if you take it too fast, it'll tell you that that's too quick. Yeah. You need to be set at this speed. So yeah. we kind of got that we kind of got that covered. Yeah. In in Hammer anyway, which yeah. is a nice little another nice little advert for us. Not only my my jacket should be an <laughs> advert for us. Um the fact that we have a you know an optimal speed setting for when you are mapping. Yeah, Hammer missions. Um, we we understand shutter speed. We understand shutter speed, which is not a great tagline. <laughs> no, no. People be that bothered by it. No. <laughs> we understand shutter speed, so what? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, when when photos are not being taken, then you know uh, <laughs> it boils down to shutter speed. Uh, Indeed. So um, you've also got, obviously, as we've spoken about earlier, you've got mechanical shutter versus global shutter as yeah. well. Yeah. Um. Obviously, mechanical shutter. You know, say what you see. It's uh, it's a shutter that has mechanics to open and close the shutter. Yeah. Whereas uh, whereas global is actually a digital shutter. Yeah. So there's. There's various aircraft on the market that have, I mean, most of them have a digital shutter or the mm-hmm. global electronic shutter. No, yeah. yeah, the global shutter. Yeah. Um, you know, I think definitely, obviously, the P1 has mechanical. Mm. Um, P4 yes. has mechanical. Yeah. The top end P4 does anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, and does the new Mavic 3? Yeah, the Mavic 3 has a ma- mechanical shutter, yeah. mechanical global shutter. So, I mean, the key thing there is the mechanical versus electronic, I think, is um, I think from the drone mapping point of view, normally the mecha- mechanical ones have been global. And that's why they sort of used interchangeably the word mechanical and global. Yeah. But really what you want to do is your drone taking images in one shot, um, yeah. as in all pixels getting information together off like light information so that the image is formed at one shot. Whereas the digital or electronic uh, is sort of doing it in a line by line fashion, kind of like a scanner. Yeah. Yeah. So as you're moving and doing this sort of line by line thing, as you can imagine, you can get more motion blur, you can get all sorts of issues, distortions. Um, so, yeah. It's like, mechanical, opens, takes the shot, closes. Yeah. So it takes yeah. all the information in one hit. Yeah. You're right. Whereas the, the digital yeah. opens, reads all the information, closes in yeah. a digital fashion. Yeah. The only issue with the mechanical one is that it can be more prone to breakdown because it's a mechanical, it's a yeah. hardware implementation yeah. of the shutter as opposed to a digital one. So as we know, hardware can break down more easily than software because of wear and tear. So um so Just you like know my pros car. and cons. <laughs> Not that my car's broken at the moment, but obviously, you know, I, I uh, yeah, everyone has a has a car that will break. It's the same you know, it's this it's the same kind of issue with yeah. a mechanical shutter. It, it they are prone to going wrong. Yeah. I mean there's anything. moving there's moving parts. Yeah, moving parts, friction, you know, yeah. physics. Um so but yeah, so that's the shutter. I think I can't believe we've talked so much about the shutter, but the shutter's so no, important. We proper, yeah. sp- we proper spoke about shutter. <laughs> um I guess next to be I mean, we've we've got we've got an extensive list here, Varen. We do. We do yeah. have an extensive list of of stuff. So mm-hmm. we've won the last couple of subjects. So, mm-hmm. um, sensor size, I suppose, versus distance to target. Yes. Um. So this is something that I think you were talking about earlier, right? So, mm. um, your sensor size and pixels, the camera really can dictate. Um, how close or far you can be can afford to be from the target yeah um, so you know if you're doing um i mean you you capture that cottage um in 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 the uk didn't you with the yep with uh 
with a large sensor size and then also with a small sensor size. Um, yeah. And you could afford to be further away with the large well, sensor with size. Well, uh, with the larger sensor size, you know, I could afford to be at 190 feet. Yeah. And the, the production of the, the quality of the of the the model that we created was really, really good because yeah. of the set, the size of the sensor, mm-hmm. it pulls in, it can pull in more information from a greater distance. Yeah. Um, and then we had to fly the smaller sensor size as an experiment. We flew that at half the distance Yeah. Um, to see if we could see if we could match it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, you know, the, the, the higher the sensor size in pixels means you can fly further away from target, which obviously, you know, in a safety aspect, mm-hmm. Is a lot safer yeah um and obviously you can collect yeah you, know, you can collect a lot of data and you can do it quicker as yeah. well because you're yeah. further away from the target collecting more information yeah um higher altitude yeah. further distance away yeah. less images overall uh bigger images but less images in total yeah um and just yeah. as scary just as scary just as scary <laughs> yeah. yeah oh look yeah. that giant that giant rig that's worth about 30 grand mm. is at nearly 200 feet in the sky. <laughs> Just hurry um, up and collect the data so I can get you back down again. Which is interesting because I think, um, you know, from a future standpoint, I, I wonder because if the focal length and then the sensor size and megapixels, all these metrics keep going up, yeah. uh, you could afford to have a drone so far in, in the sky, so far high in the sky that you don't even know it just kind of flew over your property or your air you know and just mapped the whole thing and so well, i mean a bit like a satellite at, yeah i mean even some of the uh some of the fixed wing stuff yeah you know the fixed wing stuff just goes out and does it does its thing beef loss yeah. beyond visual light of the site for those that don't know um and they they carry high megapixel cameras on them and they will go and map miles worth of yeah. of data and they they fly really high up yeah, exactly. I mean, so I mean, we are obviously we we are sort of um, associated with Ordnance Survey in some way because uh, they were one of our early backers. And Ordnance Survey, which is the largest mapping agency in the UK, they've got high altitude planes that they fly on a yep. regular basis to with 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 these sort of massive cameras um, to be able to just get high resolution imagery from a distance. And most of the times, we're we're kind of agnostic we just, we, we just don't know that's happening just unaware it's going on yeah. um i mean saying that yesterday I sat in my office and um there was some a big massive rumble mm-hmm. went outside and there was a, a chinook flying over the top of my house i mean obviously you, could, you know that's there you definitely um, know that's there but yeah that was quite high up mm-hmm. making a boatload of noise flying through the rain clouds wow. and rain and oh well, yeah it was it was horrific but yeah, quite often there's a lot there's a lot up there that you don't know that's going on. Yeah, and I think including that's drones. that's where yeah, including drones, drones with cameras, um, yep. and um, I mean some of the some of the stuff that you see on Google Earth, it's also collected in this in this fashion, and um, I think it's the trend is going to continue. Um, not to say that you know there's never going to be a market for the small height, like the low altitude flights will always have their place because. There's just things that you can't see from a distance. Um, like if you wanted to see an oblique angle kind of underneath the roof or kind of um, you know, really bizarre shaped facades that you can't see from a distance, I think some of those things will always require close-up inspection, yeah. close-up, uh, because you just fundamentally can't see them from a distance or yeah. from a top-down point of view. Well, we know this yeah. from the mill, don't we? The infamous mill who's just got just got a look in right at the last minute on our podcast. Um, uh, the you know, mill has got a mention. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had to crowbar it in yeah. it's, every week. She has to, she has to make an appearance. Oh, I gave her. A, oh, I gave her an agenda. She's a uh, shoe. She has a shoe. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's facades on that that we can't capture from the air. Yeah, they're they're just too. You know, there's lots of overhang so we just yeah. can't we can't pick them up it's the the same sort of thing yeah um, and you um, probably even need to get ground cameras involved at that stage because yeah you would do yeah so um yes um speaking of the mill um exposure is an important Ooh. consideration um as yes. we learned. we've been we've captured mill in many different exposures in many different forms uh, forms well, not forms <laughs> but yeah ex- exposures um yeah, exposure is very important, um, especially for image quality. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, 
overexposed yuck too mm. bright too nasty underexposed you don't see anything can't see anything you know yeah. you don't get any detail uh, yeah. which again both of those factors no good for photogrammetry at yeah. all um key point extraction see Ooh. Ooh. technical it's a, it's a good word that getting um com the, comprehensive the, 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 yeah, yeah exactly the software wouldn't be able to wouldn't be able to pick up key points to be able to, to be able to match mm -hmm. so having a good exposure yeah um you know is, is paramount really and a consistent one at that because yeah you don't want to have some images with high exposure some with low some with medium uh you know it's, you don't want a very creative process here in terms of you know you just want to have same yeah, exposure you, all images i mean that's why we possible. say you know an overcast day is a good day to fly yeah because the, the likelihood of um of the sun coming out going back in coming out going back in is is quite low um which will obviously will change your exposure when yeah. you're you know when you're collecting data yeah. um I mean, the other option of course on those sort of days is to take the drone up in auto mm -hmm. Ooh, mm -hmm. not something we like to hear go up in auto get to a point where you are satisfied in auto mm -hmm. with the quality of the picture mm -hmm. bosh set it over to manual and leave it yeah. there and it yeah. will stay it will stay in that with those camera settings yeah. whatever they may be you know shutter exposure iso they will stay there yeah exactly um yeah. so that'd be a that'd be a, another option yeah because with exposure what you don't want to do is with auto the problem is you're flying and let's say it's a couple of batteries and suddenly you've got you know i don't know you just get or well, you know just suddenly you have sun coming out of the clouds or whatever and then there's an there's a lighting conditions change yeah auto just change changes it completely and then you end up with this mishmash of images at the end with some changes of them the look of your changes the look of your shot which will yeah. change your um it will change your end production yeah or massive shadows coming in suddenly so yeah um so yeah i think you know this it's funny how we've been talking about it, but we've gone through so many things you've got the sensor size you've got focal length you've got exposure you've got shutter speed you've got there's a the, lot uh, to consider so when much it comes to, con to cameras uh, cameras are complex just, thing they are it's not <laughs> something you can just chuck in the air and get a couple of photos yeah. um if you want you know if you want a quality a quality output um you're gonna have to know your stuff Really? Okay, here's a controversial question for you. Oh, come on. Um, what do you think is a more complex system, a drone or a camera? Well, you can learn both, right? Oh, no, sure. But from just a kind of, what do you think is more complex to design? Or like... Camera. I think a camera, personally. Camera. Okay. Yeah, I mean, drones are fun. I'll say to them we go. Drones are fundamentally the same, aren't they? They mm -hmm. they have a purpose. I mean, I know cameras have a purpose as well. Yeah. But you know, drones. The the idea behind a drone is to take a payload into the air. Yes. Whatever that payload may be. Mm. If that payload's a camera, mm -hmm. there's lots of different types of camera you can get. Yeah. Including, because I know it's on our list, thermal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which we'll come to in a minute. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, there's, there's obviously lots of... So yeah, I think camera. I'm going camera. camera. You're going camera. Yeah. Okay, cool. So camera. it's based on the fact that you can have many different types of cameras. Is that is that kind of... Yeah, going on that and the fact that cameras, you know, there are lots of different types of camera that you can, mm. that you can use. You know, you've got, you know, you've got your high class, high end cinema cameras. You've got mm. uh, your digital SLRs. You've got your thermal cameras, which I know we're coming on to next. Um so you've got you know and then you've got your smaller drone cameras that are prefixed to the aircraft so there's a lot of different complexity when it comes to cameras well you've got lots of different types of drones as well alex all the all the drone enthusiasts on the pod are like i know oh, they're, they're, gonna, they're, they're gonna they're, they're gonna, gonna be like yeah. like but you've got fixed wings you've got rotors you've got tricopters that, they're gonna got be going that fella knows nothing <laughs> um, yeah there are lots of different types of drone too but at the end of the day a drone is a means to get a payload in the air. Okay, so you think that the camera is more fundamental than the drone? Well, um, it's, yeah, but without the drone, you're not going to get the camera in the air unless you stick it and put it on a stick. True. So then the drone is more fundamental. Oh, 
Oh, I don't know. Sorry, I'm just. <laughs> I'm, just a, I'm trying it, to be devil's it, advocate over it's here. A, it's without, a catch without... twenty two, isn't it? Because without the drone, you're not getting yeah. the camera in the air. Yeah. But if you take a camera, a, a drone up with no camera, what's the point? You yeah. Zip it, zip it around for a laugh, but True. you're not going to capture anything while you're up there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe True. they're both. Maybe they're they're equal. Ooh. Ooh. That's a safe Should answer. I do that. That's a safe answer. Safe, that'll stop. Yeah. That'll stop all the uh, all the lovers raging. I'm going to say they are equal. Should we open this question in the comments? So maybe people can put down in the comments whether they think the drone is more complex a system or a camera. Yeah. Who agrees with me and says camera? I'm not. I'm saying they're equal. <laughs> let's see what people come back with. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see what people. Let's see what people say. Yeah. Um, which brings us on to the type of camera you mentioned. Thermal. thermal thermal so let's let's thermal. give thermal a mention because obviously um i mean can't leave thermal behind as as I, it's a totally different ball game isn't it you're not yeah. you know you're not out there collecting nice photography or photography for photogrammetry or, or you are for inspection mm -hmm. we'll come to that in a sec mm -hmm. um you know the thermal camera is designed to specifically look for faults yeah water ingress mm -hmm. heat radiation mm -hmm. you know whatever it may be it's thermal for god's sake so you know it's not it's not it's designed for a purpose yeah a specific purpose yeah which is at the end of the day temperature sensing right yeah in some sense yeah um so um <laughs> yeah hot or cold how hot how yeah. cold um and yeah, I think you're right that you know it's very specialized as a camera. Can't just use it for everything. Um, no. um and yeah, radiometric has been a big consideration for thermal cameras in um in recent years because that just allows you to have the right amount of sensing per pixel uh, to be able yep. to do heat maps and whatnot, to be able to do thermal surveys and whether it's roof thermal surveys or kind of um you know solar panel surveys or any kind of thermal application um and obviously the non-radiometric you can probably still use in a kind of search and rescue uh type application so generally they're pretty low res cameras aren't they yeah yeah um but then they yeah. don't need to be high res particularly yeah yeah i mean given their purpose i mean in some sense you've got the pixels and each pixel has a heat signature so you know you kind of have a lot of information packed into them um and for what they need to be doing, low res works just fine. Um, yeah, you don't need a lot of detail to know if something's hot or cold. Um, you no. need radiometric cameras. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, you know, it. I think just the costs of these cameras, in terms of like what it costs, maybe the manufacturers to produce these because they're highly specialized equipment. Yeah. Um, I think is higher, and I think also because they're a niche market compared to some of the visual cameras. Um, I think those two things sometimes puts the price up uh, in terms of what a thermal camera costs. Having said that, I mean, DJI has become quite good at bundling thermal and visual yeah. cameras into one system, haven't they? Yeah. So, Although um, with, the, with the Mavic 3, they've mm -hmm. got the Mavic 3E mm -hmm. and the Mavic 3T. Mavic 3T, so It's yeah. got its own thermal one, which I think yeah. has another camera on it. It's not just thermal. Yeah, I think and it has a visual said, aid. Yeah. I said that thermal is, you know, good for inspection and yada yada. It's also used heavily in search and rescue. Yeah. For obvious reasons. Yeah. Like nighttime uh, search yep. and rescues and um yeah. So I mean that's that's an interesting point, right? Because the camera is almost inevitably tied to the application, right? You yes. know, you, you're gonna always think about the application first and then the right camera for it. Um, yep. And I think that's that's sort of in some sense, you know, if you had to design a workflow as to how to, which camera should I go for, what property should I have? Um, in one in one way of looking at it is like, okay, what is the application? What am I trying to achieve? Okay, what is the best camera for this application? Yeah. Okay, what is the best drone to carry this camera? Right. Um, and then what is the best? It all depends to how how specialist you are. You know, it, if you're just starting out, obviously the lower end of the market, 
you know, the higher up enterprise teams will obviously look at using the the more expensive kit because they have more budget to to use. Yeah. Yeah. So to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Do you Absolutely. think we've we do you think we've proper gone off on one about cameras? We I think we have. Uh I don't yeah. think I've ever talked about cameras at this no. point. How long uh, how long have we been? Dan, what's what's the time? What's the um, what's it say? I think we are roughly maybe fifty minutes in. Um I don't know. It's gotta be, yeah. the, it's got to be the longest one. It's yeah. the longest we've done, yeah. Um, um to yeah. this recording thing doesn't tell me how long we've been recording <laughs> for. It's been roughly fifty, I think. Wow. Yeah. To wow, we math. proper proper went off on one. We did. Um, good though. But it's cameras good. are so fundamental. I mean, sorry. They are. Uh, uh, depending on wh- whether you think they're fundamental or not. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, right, yeah, we'll find out, won't we? They're equally the same. Equally the same. <laughs> yeah. Drone or camera? That is the debate. Right. Yes, that is the debate. Drone or camera? Yeah. Let's see what let's see what people say. I'm let's very curious start, to see what people. Let's say. see if we can start an argument on YouTube. Polarizing it's the drone camp and the camera camp. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how battle it out. Team, yeah. team, camera, team camera. <laughs> no, team both. Team both. Team both. Team both. Team both. <laughs> cool. Cool. Right. Well, I think we. I think we. I think we're done. We, we are done? done, Alex. No, this was yeah. great. Mm. And I've watched yeah. the weather outside my window change from quite nice to thunder, lightning, and a hell of a lot of rain to now sun again. Wow. You got all seasons going. That's the UK for you. That's Woo-hoo! the UK. We love it. Yeah. Um, right. So as per usual, actually, I'll let you do this bit this week. No, no, you go for it. I'm going to do it, am I? Okay. Um, so obviously you can subscribe to us here on uh, on on YouTube. Uh, drop us a like. Give us a comment. We'd like your comments because we want to know what camp you're in, drone or, drone or camera. Uh, you can also listen to us on all of your podcast directories too, because this now goes out as a podcast once a week. So either way, give us a listen. Um, and obviously, if you have any any questions at all and you want to come directly to us, it's team at hammermissions.com. And there you go. Brilliant. That was great, Alex. Yeah, great catching up. Yeah, nice one. Cheers, nice Baron. One. Cheers. I'm, uh, I'm off to dance around in my in my Hammer Missions jacket in the rain. Because <laughs> I know it's uh, splash proof. And I will catch you later on. I'll catch you later. Nice one. Cheers, nice. man. Cheers. Bye. Take care.